What is up, YouTube? This is the IOTA Boat channel, where I focus on research that I find within the IOTA ecosystem. All right. I'm going to start calling these videos Connecting the Nodes. Um, I play on Connecting the Dots, of course. Um, so we're going to get into some really juicy stuff this time. All right. Uh, so I'm going to name this video IOTA Soulmate to the Metaverse, and we'll get into why <laughs> a little later on. Uh, but check this out. I want to definitely give thanks to everyone that showed uh, showed out or showed love to my last video on the Shimmer Network. Uh, that means a lot. It was way more way more feedback than I thought uh, would come with my second video. But I want to try to bring that same energy for this one as well. Uh, for everyone that loves research and loves finding new things, uh, hope that hopefully this one uh, suits you well. All right, but let's get into it. So for this video, I'm touching on a, pa on a research paper I found. Uh, the name is AFL DAG, Asynchronous Federated Learning with Directed Acyclic Graph Based Blockchain and Edge Computing. So this paper talks about creating a new state-of-the-art system utilizing the IOTA Tango as a backbone for asynchronous federated machine learning in an edge computing environment. All right, they compare how um, they compare how the IOTA protocol can be used to allow for IoT devices of varying CPU sizes, uh, storage capabilities, or network bandwidth, and can how they can all work together and communicate asynchronously to create data models in a fast-moving IoT environment. So uh, they, they're coming up with new general terms, uh, processes, algorithms, and comparing it with processes with other forms of federated learning, such as uh, blockchain federated learning, etc. Uh, but you can really see it well in these two diagrams. So while in the blockchain environment, the system is hindered by the linearity of the blockchain to create new local or global models. While in the Tangle environment, you can see the devices or the nodes can pull data irregularly uh, to start a new learning process. So it works like this. Number one, every edge device or DAG node creates its own sub DAG, which consists of transactions and the approvals of the transactions via its peer-to-peer -peer network. From the node-specific sub-DAG, each device selects its own tip selections by the predefined tip selection algorithm and builds the reference model on which the device is going to train this local model. Then the device starts training its local model by its privacy-sensitive data and builds the local model update. Then the edge device validates that local model by comparing the accuracy of that with the existing reference model. Along with the model validation, the edge device performs the transaction validation, such as the verification of previous transaction hash information for DAG network integrity. And then finally, the device broadcasts a new transaction, which consists, which contains its local model update and, pre and previous transaction information to its peer DAG node. And then they say uh, that due to the asynchrony, asynchrony property of DAG, there's no single tip status that is admitted by the participating nodes from that DAG system itself. Therefore, AFL DAG comes as a promising alternative to both enable decentralized and asynchronous federated learning in edge computing. And if you look further in the paper, you see it's much like in the last paper, or it's very similar to the last paper that I mentioned in this in the Shimmer Network video, uh, where they use multiple UAVs to gather information. Here, they're implementing it in a crowdsourcing system, uh, whereas the crowdsourcing system is a machine learning system to generate a global model integrated from local models trained by each UAV based on the collected data itself. So the traditional AI or machine learning models use a single server to aggregate the local models, uh, but that would be inefficient in a network that requires it to be distributed over a large scale or if they have differing time, t time variables, things like that. Also in a single server, it opens up the system to possible information tampering for whoever owns that server. They say while blockchain federated learning can solve that, it can't solve the straggler issues, which is where you have to wait for uh, all the information to uh, be, be received before uh, before they can complete that, that new global model or that heterogeneous device issue where you have multiple devices of different sizes, like we said before, different CPU sizes, storage sizes, uh, internet capabilities, Wi-Fi, things like that. Being able to transmit their data at different variables, you need to have uh, an asynchronous type environment. So I won't I won't bore you with all going through all 41 pages of this research, but I do encourage you to check it out. It was interesting. Um, I'll link it on my Twitter page along with the video. Uh, but why is this important? Why am I bringing this paper to your attention in this video? Um, I say to the art, Machine learning system is exciting in itself, especially when you start thinking about the possibilities it could bring. Um, and, and they use the word state of the art, not me. This is a quote. <laughs> OK, look, uh, but let's look at who was involved in writing this paper. All right. First, we have Carnegie Mellon University. Many have heard of them and recognize they are one of the top research 
universities in the world. But what people may not know is that they were the first to coin the term for a smart device network, giving rise to the Internet of Things. So let's go to this blog post I found from the blockchaincouncil.org website. They say the concept of a smart devices network was coined in 1982 when a Coca-Cola vending machine was unveiled as the first ARPANET supported appliance at Carnegie Mellon University. So now you have Carnegie Mellon, one of the top research universities using the IOTA Tangle as a test bed for a state of the art machine learning system and creating new terminologies based on it specifically. Okay. And if that wasn't enough, (laughs) I found another hidden gem. Uh, and the authors, but but not directly. So this is where we're connecting the dots. All right. And and when you're in the land of the NDAs where nothing is stated and all is inferred, it's up to us to connect the dots. OK, now stick with me. OK, I found this speech by the Caroline fam of the CFC of the CFTC. She gave this speech on September 7th, 2022 at the Euro 5 Financial Forum in Prague. That's about a couple weeks back from the time I'm recording this. Um, in here, she touches on the importance of the metaverse and its future impact. And I just want to touch on a few key passages of the speech. OK, the metaverse is here and now corporations, venture capital and private equity have already invested more than 120 billion into the metaverse space in the first five months of 2022. Ninety five percent of business leaders expect the metaverse to have a positive impact on their industry within five to ten years and 61 percent expected to moderately change the way their industry operates. The report also found that the industries most like most likely to be impacted by the metaverse include consumer and retail media and te- tele- media and telecommunications and healthcare. And those industries are, are mo- also among those already undertaking metaverse initiatives. In the near term, the metaverse may generate up to $5 trillion in impact by 2030, if not more. High potential consumer uh, use cases include e-com and high potential enterprise use cases include banking, discrete manufacturing, professional services, retail, telecommunications, media and process manufacturing. In some ways, online gaming is a preview or a, a proto metaverse of what's in store. As a side note, it's also my view that augmented reality or virtual reality is not required to experience the metaverse. While I was in Seoul earlier this year for Korea Blockchain Week, I saw the metaverse with my own eyes on a regular screen. AR and VR is just an enhancement right now. The top five metaverse activities that consumers are excited about are social, entertainment, gaming, travel and shopping. The top five enterprise use cases that that companies are already implementing in the metaverse are marketing, employee learning, and development business meetings, business meetings, events or conferences and product design or digital twinning. Now, here's where it gets interesting. (laughs) All right. Uh, The public sector is also exploring use cases in the metaverse. Dubai's Dubai's virtual assets regulatory authority is the first regulator in the metaverse, establishing a headquarters in the sandbox platform. Seoul is the first city government that is set to join the metaverse with the virtual Seoul City Hall plaza and civil service center and announced a five-year metaverse soul basic plan in order to provide uh, civic freedom participation engagement and communication and seoul korea's ministry of science and information and communication technology recently released a a consultation on eight ethical principles for the metaverse ecosystem authenticity autonomy reciprocity respect for privacy fairness data protection inclusiveness and accountability So what do we now have? We have Carnegie Mellon University, a prestigious school, research school in the United States, known for coining the first Internet of Things term. Then you have two prestigious Seoul Korean universities in Seoul National University and Songseo University, uh, where when I looked up Seoul National University, it's it's considered the most prestigious school in 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 uh, South Korea. All right. And then you also have DSRV, which turns out to be a blockchain research facility in in the Republic of Korea. All right. And to top it all off, you have uh, Carolyn Pham of the CFTC mentioning that Seoul Korea is supposed to be the first government city government to enter into that metaverse space. It all starts to connect. It all starts to connect. Now, I'm not saying that IOTA is going to be used in the government uh, metaverse infrastructure. But when you have these things lining up, it definitely puts a good light on IOTA itself, right? 
And that's not even to mention where industry validation comes into play. Uh, when you start thinking about the projects that in part, the projects and partnerships that IOTA already has, such as um, Project Alfred, which recently announced their first prototype showing uh, showing their first prototype in hardware using IOTA uh, inside. Uh, it's a traffic pole that helps to transmit data from smart cars or, you know, different. They help transmit different traffic situations to help smart cars or smart vehicles um, stay aware of their, their surroundings a lot better than what they currently have. And right now you have smart cars with just cameras or you have like satellite images. You need something that gives real time data down to like the middle, the, mi the millimeter. Uh, and that's what that provides, it seems like. Um, and then also, um, it's a company called Swarm Logistics that I found uh, or that I saw a video on where they give a proof of concept on what they consider to be their metaverse economy and how that would work. And they have that shown on the backbone of using the using IOTA as a backbone for that uh, ecosystem. All right. So looking at that, that's dealing with uh, using private, public or self-owned machines uh, and like a Swarm Logistics um economy so it's basically imagine like uh, fleets of trucks all automated uh no human interaction all competing for for uh business and um transferring transferring goods um uh, it may not be trucks it could be other agents uh things you own it could be owned by the government uh all comp all a part of the same metaverse uh economy pool so to speak but they're all competing and using smart contracts um to, to get profit using uh so that's where things like um that's where things like uh microtransactions would come into play um small goods transferred here and there's energy transmission whatever the case may be it's it's really open-ended um and what that could provide so that's a very interesting video if you're interested in that as well and lastly let's not forget iota's already implemented in um STM microelectronics chips. So there's that. But all of that is basically just laying down that new age infrastructure that we need to provide a better IoT metaverse uh, world. You need that real time data at real time uh, at different intervals to provide an experience that is um, what we would consider to be that that industry 4.0 uh, economy. You, you need you need something that's secure, something scalable. You need something that's low cost um, in order to fil facilitate all this data transfer and, and, and micro transaction transfers, things like that. So that's why I think that um, a fearless protocol like IOTA, it's, it's kind of unmatched uh, when once they get now, once they provide IOTA 2.0 on the main net. Uh, and it becomes decentralized. Imagine when you have multiple IoT devices all running their own, their own node, uh, making their own uh, monetary transactions uh, 24 seven. That's where things could get extremely decentralized. Um, IOTA could literally become the most decentralized protocol in the world. Uh, just thinking about that. How many IoT devices do you think will be created in the future? Like that's that's open ended. That's almost endless. Right. But what it really boils down to is that all these industry leaders are given are given their sign of approval on this. So all the different research papers, uh, all the different research groups, they're all saying, hey, Iota, this this actually works for what we're looking for. It may not be exactly what they're looking for. They still need some work to be done, some some more infrastructure to be built. But they're saying, hey, this this actually works. And that's what you need. You need that. You need that industry validation, like I said before. And I was going to end the in the video there, but then I found another research paper. <laughs> All right. This one's called an energy optimized specializing DAG federated learning based on event triggered communication. All right. It basically takes that paper that I just talked about and they they, they bring it to a new level by uh, instead of transmitting that local model once it's finished, it only it only transmits once it's it notices that its local model is drastically different from that global model. So it helps to save in energy costs. And this one is done by the Harbin Institute of Technology, which when I looked up the school is part of what China calls it C9 League, which is part of what they deem to be like their Ivy League schools. So it's not it's not just some no name school. So so what do we now have? All right. OK, we have Carnegie Mellon University, the first the first to term the first Internet of Things term in the world. All right. <laughs> and that's a prestigious uni United States school. You have Seoul National University and Sungsil University from Seoul, Korea, two prestigious schools signing off on that. 
All right. DSRV, a blockchain research group in Seoul, Korea, all giving the go ahead saying that federated learning built on IOTA protocol works. OK, you have another paper that builds on top of that saying, hey, we could do it better. We could make it even more energy efficient. This is uh, a Chinese uh, prestigious school, given their given their sign of approval that this works or is a viable solution. OK, and then you have a, a hint that uh, Seoul Korea could be getting into the metaverse uh, pretty soon. Going head first. So that's <laughs> it gets heavy, man. It gets heavy. But also, what do we know from the blockchaincouncil.org uh, blog post? It's that IoT and Metaverse go hand in hand. You need that updated infrastructure in place to bring the full potential out of the Metaverse. And you need something that's low cost, something that's private, something that uh, can scale and runs in an asynchronous uh, environment, low energy use, okay? And to me, it sounds like iota fits that bill all right not saying that they will use iota not saying they won't and this is not financial advice <laughs> but i'm just here to connect some nodes for y'all man that's about it that's about it i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you do your research as well and i hope you see my see me on my next video